Welcome back, everybody. This is episode four of my no quick saves, no blackjack, no bones about it, keto, no items, fox only, final destination, thief the dark project challenge run. Uh, today's episode is going to be of the mission titled Down in the Bone Horde. And this one, it's something a little different. It was a it was a gamble to put missions like this in a stealth game, but I think it really pays off. Some people disagree, as I addressed in my Thief video, but I think it's killer. So let's just get into the opening cutscene and then you can let me know what you think. I was pissed at Cuddy for a good while after the prison debacle. But hey, you can't blame him for what the Hammers did to him. So I decided to go after that horn Felix talked about. Not like I had a whole lot of choice, really. The rent is due. And my landlord's even tougher than the Hammers. The map's pretty specific about where the entrance is. Too bad it's not as clear about where the horn is. Felix did some scrounging before he left, and his notes say the horn is in the tomb of some nobles. The Quintus family. Guess I'll just have to explore. Felix, always helpful, also said that the catacombs are supposed to be haunted. I think I'll go make some inquiries about where a heretic like me can get some holy water. Always go prepared. All right, so we've got a couple of objectives here. Um, we actually, in addition to the Horn of Quintus, we need to find two other artifacts called the Mystic Soul and the Mystic's Heart. Uh, yeah, we're on expert difficulty, so uh, normal, you really only have to find the Horn of Quintus and then the mission ends. But on expert, we have to find three things in this labyrinthine tomb and then work our way out at the very end. We also have to find loot, but most of that is covered by the uh, Mystic's Soul and the Mystic's Heart. Also, I want to address something that I said in the last video. Um, I mentioned when I found Felix's note uh, by the guard post in that little sewer area, I failed to address that Cuddy mentioned that Felix's note should have been in the evidence locker, which was on the top floor of the prison in the... Um, in the officer's quarters. And when I checked in there, we found a note saying that someone had escaped with half the contents of the evidence box. And that was uh, Naman, who stole Felix's map and tried to break out with the map so that he could steal the Horn of Quintus for himself, but he did not make it out of the prison. And that's where we found his corpse was in a little hidey hole hiding out from the hammers, but I guess he never had the courage to leave. I misinterpreted the, uh, the storytelling there and I just wanted to set the record straight. So, we've got a few, we've got one notable new addition here. So we're starting off with a load of holy water, which we're not gonna be using because we're not gonna be smiting any undead if I have anything to say about it. But you might notice this little thing called the rope arrow. And we've already got you know, a few different arrow types. It's a very versatile, the bow is a very versatile weapon and I really like how they do that in this game, but the rope arrow is really the one that blows the doors off in terms of progression. I mean, it really cracks this game wide open in a good way. And I'll show you what I mean, but let's start off with some healing potions. Uh, we're susceptible to fall damage in here. This is a very vertical level, so I wanna make sure I can heal. I'm gonna buy all those water arrows and two noisemakers for good measure. All right, so we start outside of the tomb. We have an undead here, and we know to avoid him at all costs. 
gonna go up here and grab a little trinket before we head into the uh, the tomb proper. And we are greeted with a rope. We haven't seen these since the tutorial and the game is making sure that we still know how to use them properly because we're gonna be doing quite a lot of that while we are here. It's a long way down. Now our new toy, the rope arrow, has a unique function and I really like how it works because it's just different from how things usually work in video games. It is not context sensitive, but if there is a wooden or any other soft surface that an arrow is likely to be able to stick into, like we have above and below us, we have wood, you can fire a rope arrow into it. And that rope is climbable. And this allows for all sorts of creative routing through the levels. And I'm gonna take the arrow back. You know, this is not, we are already off the intended path, but this is just the path I like to take. And the game lets you do that. And if they want to prevent you from doing that, they will put stone above your head. So it's semi-intended, I guess. But it allows for a lot of creativity. Grab a health potion here. Alarus. Um, it seems like perhaps this was... Uh, this belonged to some hammer family, this section of the tomb, but it has seen a lot of uh, decay over the years. Maybe it hasn't been tended to in a while. Maybe it's the presence of uh, all these undead. Now up here, there seems to be someone in a thief or explorer type clothing, similar garb to what we are wearing actually. Um, and if we pick him up, we can see that he is a corpse and not just an unconscious body like our friend Basso. So he seems to have met a grim fate down here and we can read his little manifesto. I've had enough. If Felix wants to stay and be killed, that's his business, but the pay's not good enough to keep me down here a minute more. We already lost Dranko to those damn belching burricks and Marcus didn't make the jump across that huge chasm. He probably drowned if he wasn't dashed to bits. I thought about looking for his body as he was carrying some loot from a poorly guarded tomb, but it wasn't worth the risk. Then we watched Cather get filled with arrows from a clever trap in one of those great octagonal vaults. Not that I cared one whit for Cather, the bastard, but I have no intention of ending up the same way. I don't expect I'll see Felix again. He seemed sure that the Horn of Quintus was somewhere north of the vaults, but I think that was just a guess. I thought those strange X-shaped marks off that branch of the Burrick tunnels were worth investigating, but Felix said they were irrelevant. Anyway, if the traps and zombies don't get him, the Burricks will. Those tunnels were a nightmare. At least our marks are were still at least our marks were mostly still intact. I'm almost out, but I need to sleep. I think the place I found is out of the way enough that the zombies won't find me. And he could not have been more wrong. Uh, it seems like the zombies did find their way up here and get to him unfortunately, but in doing so, he left a lot of information behind for us that we can either write down or just keep in mind um, things for what we can expect out of this mission and some clues as to, you know, where, where his friends might have wound up. In here we have a holy water fountain, but we're not going to be using that because we're not going to be banishing any undead. This is Baby's first arrow trap. The tombs here are a bit of a house of traps, and you have to be you have to be careful in your exploration because there's some gold up there, but if you step on that, an arrow will shoot out at you and deal heavy damage or kill you. Um, so this is kind of just a tutorial <laughs> for what we're gonna be what we're gonna be seeing a lot more of. And it requires a lot of uh, diligence and care to make it through this mission without, you know, falling into a lot of traps. You know, you really can't get hasty on this one if you don't know what you're doing. I'm gonna move quickly around these uh, sleeping undead because being quiet actually doesn't uh, prevent them from waking up. It's actually about how much time you spend in their midst. I'm going north here and I'll show you in a second, I meant to point this out. On our map, which we've seen in the, uh, which we've seen in the intro cinematic, it's rather sparse and we don't have a lot to go on except to head north to the Halls of Echoing Repose where we might find the Horn of Quintus. 
So we are going north whenever possible and finding our way through these tombs. But here there seems to be a change in the soundscape signifying that, <laughs> that yes, we are going the right way. These treasure chests are trapped, but if you um, interact with them from this side, then you are no harm from setting off the arrow trap, or at least getting hit by the arrow trap. Got a ladder here. There's a pressure plate at the bottom, so I'm going to be careful not to spend too much time weighing that down. Because if you stay there for too long, that will happen. I don't know why it's so slow. I don't, I don't know anyone who'd stay there for so long, but hey, it's there. Just another thing to, you know, maybe sober you up a little bit for what is to come. And here, this seemed to be um, a situation where maybe they ran out of space in the tomb and had to improvise a little bit, you know, tunneling into uh, other areas, I guess. We have an arrow pointing the way out. So I guess this is kind of a breadcrumb trail left from some previous explorers. Hard to say. Oh, what is that over there? This is our friend the Burrick, and he is a new enemy type. Uh, they're pretty harmless, honestly, and they're mostly cute. There's these little dinosaur doggy guys, um, and they can spit acid at you. So, you know, if you're not careful, you'll get melted by them, but they're not very fast and they're not very clever. Now in here, you know, more obvious pressure plates, you know, if you're paying attention. And we have this uh, blasted apart undead, you know, really rather grim. Just put his head there. Um, we haven't seen a lot of these because we haven't been blowing the undead apart with holy water arrows. But a cool consequence of that is that their uh, parts become physics objects, and a physics object can be used to weigh down a pressure plate, leaving us out of danger. And now we can step on this without any worry and make it through all the pressure plates. Although this guy uh, didn't seem to be quite as clever as we are. Steal his money and read his little, uh, read his diary, I guess. I've decided to take the plunge. If my records are correct, there should be a stash of fire crystals in the lowest oubliette, which was sealed for centuries, but has since been opened up by the Burricks. I'll need the crystals for the torches if I'm going to get the mystic soul. So that's a valuable hint that these fire crystals that uh, were so coveted by this gentleman actually come in handy for one of the treasures that we need to find. And the fire arrows, which we now have 12, are, 12 of, um, they're good for... they deal a lot of damage, but we're not going to be doing that, of course. So instead, we're going to use them for one of their other purposes, which is lighting these sconces on the walls. Just as you can douse torches, you can also relight them with fire arrows. Just like a little game called Breath of the Wild that was released 19 years later. Of course, that game's, uh, you know, elemental relationships were more robust, of course, but, you know, wasn't the pioneer. Let's, let's pay homage to the classics that, you know, that led the way and allowed games like that to be possible. A lot of people aren't fond of these missions where you're, where you're exploring these labyrinthine, um, natural type areas because the texture work can make them very, you know, maze-like and confusing and there's not quite as much stealth as those people would prefer, but I don't know. I think this game type is really fun. I don't know. I've gone and missed that rope completely, but that is why we brought healing potions. We alerted that Burrick there and he spit some acid at us, so I want to be careful of that on our way out. Seem to be some bones up there. I wonder if the Burricks uh, would eat a human for dinner if they got hungry enough. Somehow, I don't doubt it. 
I'm hearing some unusual sounds. I wonder what's going on over there. I've actually never heard a bird <sighs> made that, make that sound before. By the way, if we check our map, <laughs> we are nowhere. We are on our own. Map and compass don't do a whole lot. You know, you're just trusted to figure things out on your own and keep track of where you've been. This looks promising. Yeah, the Burricks really are not great at catching up to you. I mean, listen to him, listen to him run. Isn't that just the most pathetic thing you've ever heard? You know, their acid packs a punch, but, you know, you're unlikely to, <laughs> you know, you're unlikely to have too much trouble with just one Burrick. Anyway, we have this room full of statues here, and it seems like um, this gentleman was trapped here and maybe didn't want to go back down and confront the Burrick that guards this place. Let's see what he has to say. It appears I was wrong about the mystic's heart, and I will die for my mistake. The ancient tablet I found said that the heart would be in a room of statues whose gaze is death. But though there are statues here, it's clear to me now that this is not that place. I dare not go back down. The Burricks prowl, prowl below in numbers, angered at my intrusion. Unless they leave, I will starve in this godforsaken place. I guess he's not, uh quite up to snuff when it comes to evading these burricks, which is really not all that hard to do. Maybe I'll be eating my words. If you sneak up on a burrick, you can actually knock them out with the blackjack, which is unusual for non-human enemies. But I think they are the exception, the ones that you can knock out. You know, an undead, you cannot. You cannot blackjack. Now this appears to be a Burrick graveyard of some kind. Maybe they come here to die, or maybe they're brought here by their um, brethren when they die. But it's kind of cool that even though they're not very intelligent creatures, they still have a bit of culture. And we're all done in this section. dead one. There must have been a scuffle. I wonder if food is limited and they have to fight each other for it. If I can please grab this rope, that would be great. Oh, and they are all on to me, so I better scram. Now, if you listen closely, we can kind of hear something far away that we couldn't hear before. And we have an arrow pointing out, which means the way we want to go is that way. But first, I'm going to dive into this chasm, because that note we found earlier said that one of their friends uh, failed to jump across a chasm, and maybe we can find his body and uh, maybe more clues about the treasures we're looking for. And lo and behold, he is washed up here, dead as dirt. Felix doesn't care, but we've definitely found signs that Adolfo has been here before us. I don't know if he found that fabulous gemstone he always said was here, but if it is still here, it's worth more than the lousy horn of quintuplets, or whatever that thing is called. If I'm reading the signs right, Adolfo was convinced something useful was deep down below the Burrick tunnels. Getting lots of clues, and uh, these are not written down for you, you can write them down yourself as you play this game. But, uh, you know, no quest markers or anything like that to point these things out to you when you find them. You know, you're rewarded for paying attention to details like that. It's nice to play a game that respects your intelligence, you know. It's hard to come by these days. More Burricks, I think I'm just going to camp out. We're in full darkness, so we don't have too much to worry about. These guys don't have particularly keen vision. They're kind of cute, I don't know. They're very polygonal, but 
I don't know. I like them. I think we squeezed by undetected. Love to see that. I honestly love this level design, you know, where you're just going through these burrick made tunnels that have no rhyme or reason to them. It can make these levels really hard to navigate, but could you imagine designing a level like that? It's such a lost art, you know? I feel like every level is made to be so easy to navigate, but I don't know. If it's tunnels carved out by a wild animal, it's not going to be, it's not gonna have sensible architecture to it or lead the player in any meaningful way. Up here I'm going to grab a golden bone, don't worry about that yet. I'm going to collect three of them, and then I have somewhere that I want to show you. It seems this part of the tomb got flooded. Thankfully there's a little crack in the floor here that allows me to go this way. And this is one of several ways into the heck halls of echoing repose. And we get another audio cue that we might have, you might have just heard, um, showing us that, yes, we are indeed going the right way. You know, the soundscape is completely different now. We picked up another golden bone, and I'm going to get the third one in here. A couple of zombies are onto me, though, so I want to make tracks. Go quickly because rocks will fall on you and also these zombies will wake up. Seem to have done just fine though. That is an undead. He's just sleeping. It can be so hard to tell though. He's not dressed like an undead, he uh, seems to be a recent undead. I hope I'm still not being pursued. That could pose a problem. Detour. That's, uh, I don't want to deal with any of that, frankly. Now we see, as we progress into the tombs, the traps are getting more elaborate. You know, we have magical traps, which are, you know, you gotta be really wealthy to afford a thing like that that goes 24-7, just in case grave robbers break in. Here's another opportunity to use a rope arrow. Line up my jump just right. That part always gives me a mini heart attack when you have to mantle from the rope, but it's not so bad. That's the only loot we'll find in here. This belongs to the Marad hammer family, I suppose. Maybe they're not even a hammer family, who knows. Yes, I think it is. This ought to do just fine. Mm. Oh, we've sustained our first damage of this playthrough. Sorry, everyone. I, I knew it wasn't going to be a no damage playthrough, but I just didn't know when that moment would be when we first, uh, when we first took damage, and here we are. Okay, this part is a bit scary. I'm gonna try to mantle. Did it successfully. We're gonna jump here and take a little more damage. Let's drink one of those uh, health potions we have, huh? Careful not to step on any area that is illuminated, because if you look closely, these are pressure plates. I'll show you what they do at the end, it's kind of cool, honestly. Let's grab this skull here. It takes two skulls to weigh it down, so I'll place one now and one later. If we descend the ladder, there's another holy water fountain and two more golden bones, and we're gonna drop all of these into the coffin here. This was actually added 
in the uh, gold version of this game, Thief Gold. Uh, as, actually, this uh, mission got modified pretty heavily in the in the expansion pack. But I think that's a good thing. There's holy water, which we're not going to be using, and in fact. I think I'll just leave all of my jars of holy water for the next uh, traveler who comes through here. That'll be a nice surprise. You know, maybe they won't be doing a non-lethal run. And we are all done in here, but as promised, I'll show you what this does. Two skulls weigh down the pressure plate and take a step back. Pretty cool, huh? Another tomb guarded with magic, and that'll just go forever. Put out this torch because we're gonna go right in here. Not quite. Oh, come on. That is a fire elemental. He might not look very threatening, but I promise you he is. You can put him out with water arrows, but I don't want to do that. Be very careful not to make too much noise, because I do not want to get into a scuffle with this guy. Shoot a noisemaker arrow, hopefully to lure him over there. This is what the fire arrows are for. Light all five torches. He's coming. Goodbye. That was mentioned in a, in a hint, but I didn't really have the words at the moment to say all that because that's a very tense moment there. All right. And now this is uh, some of these traps are the most dangerous in the game, or in the area, rather. We jump over those two long pressure plates, and we have, uh, yeah, we're gonna have some magic firing at us in a moment. And that, the mystic soul, is right in there. I'll give you a good look at it. But you'll notice it's on a pressure plate. So if you've ever seen a little movie called Raiders of the Lost Ark, you'll know that if you steal something that is on a pressure plate, you better put something of equal weight down in its place if you don't want to have, if you don't want to be brutally murdered by traps. Kind of cool, putting the physics system to, to work, or, you know, showing off what this game's physics system can do really well, I think. You know, even though it's not stealth, there's a lot of cool, I don't know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of cool puzzles in this game that require lateral thinking. Now we're done in here, but I want to make sure that this fire ele elemental does not chase me out of here. So I'd have to be very far away if I can help it. This is also one of the few dynamic light sources in the game. You know, if you are close to him, then the, your light gem will become brighter. Thief 3 had enemies with torches that did the same, uh, but this game doesn't have so much like that. Okay. 
made it out safely. Where to next? I think this way. Yeah, we go this way. We're a little off the books, like I said. Went a route that I didn't quite anticipate, so we're going to be backtracking a bit, but that's fine. Oh, if we look at our objectives list, uh, we have the Mystic Soul in the bag, so we just need to find the Horn of Quintus, um, about 1,000 more loot, and the Mystic's Heart, and the Mystic's Heart will cover the rest of the loot requirement. Jump the gap. Yeah, this way. We're going to be passing this tomb that we've been in a few times here. And now I'm going to be going up where this was. If you're wondering why I didn't go here first, that's because I didn't route it this way. Where am I going? Do I want to go this way? Is there anything up here? What am I doing? This is not the right way. Apologies, folks. What you really want to do is instead of that, you want to go, you want to go this way. And you try your very best to not die here, because it's a bit treacherous. Climb to the very top of this ladder. Oh. Man, jumping off of ladders to safety is the scariest thing in this game. Or jumping, you know, onto ropes. Here's another Burrick. Just minding his own business. I'm gonna try not to bug him. And we are looking for a room full of statues whose gaze is death right now. Next is the uh, Mystic's Heart. I like to save the Horn of Quintus for last. Now this is quite scary and you, you have one chance to get it right, pretty much. There's not a lot of downtime. All right, there's that another tense part of this run and uh, didn't seem to have too much trouble with it. Now what do we have here? He upon whom the gaze of the guardians falls, he shall be destroyed. Not sure about that grammar, but the message comes through all the same. So this is the room full of statues whose gaze is death. You die instantly if any of these arrows points at you. So you see here I don't want to cross in front of this column because then he can see me. So this is something resembling a stealth segment. This guy seems to point at that column, so it's safe to go this way. But you have to keep an eye on everybody when you do this. And now we've circumvented him. Don't want to go this way, because he's pointing that way. How do you do this again? I think that points at this column. Yeah, and that points that way, so I wanna go. But this guy is scary, that, that isn't quite lined up. We're still not crossing his line of sight. Through here. Man, even if you know the solution to that puzzle, it's so scary every time. But there's a chest over here, and I'm going slowly because, well, I'll just show you. This is a new enemy type. And these guys are no joke. Got nowhere to run. Except that teleports you out. There was no way to ascend back uh, through this room here. But if you look in our, uh, in our inventory in the bottom right, we have the Mystic's Heart as well as our 2000 loot requirement. We'll see more of those uh, those fellows later, and I'll get into into what they are and what they what they do in a bit. But I, I like their sound effects, their sound design a lot. 
you know, some of the best horror sound design in any game, I think, is with those, uh, those enemies there. That enemy there that we just saw and enemies like him. Okay. Gonna, I wanted to have one stylish moment in this run that's not quite optimal, just to do something different, so hopefully I won't die here. We picked up a speed potion in the first part, so I'm gonna take it yeah. and make a crazy jump. Oh, okay. Gonna move very slowly, because the speed potion still hasn't worn off. I hear the horn growing louder. And there's a lot of Burricks down here. And something cool about them is that they are docile, like the note said. Because they're close to the horn, they've got no issue with me. The sound, the sound of the horn, horn should be should keeping be any little little Burricks, Burricks happy and peaceful like. Light. Of course, when I nab the horn, that may change. I'll put this out preemptively, because they get a little restless when they don't have their nighttime music anymore. Good thing I'm not afraid of heights. When the iPad dies, the, uh, the baby gets a little cranky. Here we have some uh, more perilous platforming. I've worked out fairly consistent methods for doing all this, but that doesn't make it any less terrifying. Another ladder here. It's kind of hard to see, honestly, against this texture, especially since it isn't well lit. But if you check every wall, you'll find it eventually. This ladder you want to climb to the very top of, and then make the jump. I don't know how else to do that part. Any of these falls will insta-kill me, by the way. Almost don't want to take it because the sound design of this moment is just so masterful. But unfortunately, we have to end this video eventually. So we're taking that. Check our objectives. All we gotta do is get out of here. I do have one more pit stop I wanna make before I do that. But we are just about done. That was a close one. Would not be a, a let's not quick save ever run if we didn't have at least one really close call. So, oh boy. I don't want to say we're out of the woods, but no more insta-kill opportunities, I think. So we can breathe a little bit. Now we have to find our way through the barracks. I'm gonna use our other noisemaker arrow. That's why we bought two. Well, I guess I picked up the first one. But we're gonna use this one here. Please get up there. We made it out without attracting any attention. I think there's a way to do that without using a noisemaker arrow, but I have not found the path, so I don't bother. Gotta be careful of this bit. More magical traps. Lost again, you'll have to forgive me. No, we're going this way. We already crossed the bridge once before, or the, the gap. And this time we're passing by here again. I know, painfully inefficient. But here we get into one of my favorite rooms in the whole mission that I just had to show you 
you know, you can't do this mission and not show this room, at least in my opinion. This isn't mentioned in any of the clues. There seems to be some kind of shrine here with a face on it. It's like Link's Awakening a bit, if you've played that game. He said, stay away from my face, thief, or you'll be sorry. And much like how we approach every other obstacle down here, we just approach him from the side while he spews all of his fireballs. And now he looks empty and destitute because we solved his puzzle and he didn't get to fry us with his fire breath. So now we have to work our way all the way out you know, go back the way we came, you know, and follow those arrows, right? Well, yes and no, because you could do that if this was your first time playing the game. But also, there is a handy dandy little secret that we are coming up on. And the highest point that we can access right now, at the highest point on this side of the catacombs, we have a tunnel. Seems to be pretty far away from everything else. We have a barrel of something or other. And this uh, innocuous looking little crawl space is our ticket to freedom. Look at that. We are outside. Think how deep we were into the belly of the beast. And we found our way out with our cunning alone. All right, we cleared all of the objectives, you know like you have to do to complete the mission. And let's take a look at our stats, shall we? So that was 34 minutes. Man, it feels like we're doing all of these in around the same amount of time. That's so strange, but it just means that the balancing for these missions is great, you know, and that when you're experienced, you can, they all take about the same amount of time. 34 minutes and 21 seconds. We got 2,400 loot out of 2,450. Actually not sure what I missed, but I'll have to go back and look at that. Uh, we dealt zero backstabs and zero knockouts. No damage, no healing. Uh, no damage dealt or taken and no healing. I will never get that part correct until the end of this series. No innocents killed or any others. And our campaign totals are we are 1 hour 59 minutes and 14 seconds into this playthrough and have amassed 5,427 loot. Not too bad. And we have our inaccurate reading of 34 damage dealt and 22 received. I'm going to be keeping track. Um, there's 34 erroneous damage and 12 erroneous uh, damage received. So we're at zero damage dealt and 10 damage received because we took a bit of a uh, bit of fall damage today, if I recall. Anyway, that's uh, that's going to do it. Anywho, uh, thank you for joining me. And next time we've got another stellar mission, but it couldn't be any more different from this one. You know, it's a much more traditional uh, rob the mansion, much like our first mission type deal. Uh, but it's a great deal more complex, and there are lots more secrets to be found. And I'll show you where a good few of them are, all the ones that I know of. So if you'll join me next time, it'll be, it'll be a good time. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. We are dead. <laughs>